is up, Apex Nation, and welcome to Innsmouth. I can't remember if it's called Greens from Innsmouth, just Innsmouth. I believe it's just called Innsmouth. The Innsmouth Case. That's the name of the game. Hope you guys are having a great day. Let's start a new game. Ooh. Boston, Massachusetts, your office. Forward. We are fans of the strange world of Innsmouth, but recognize the problem beliefs of HP Lovecraft. Problematic beliefs of HP Lovecraft. This game has been produced by a group of people who believe in inclusion and equality. Oh, that's nice. Boston, September 31st, September. Did I gotta click? No. The last rays of sunshine filter through the blinds of your empty office. The pathetic stench of whiskey, cold cigarette smoke, cold cigarette smoke? And candid what, a can ravioli fills the air. The stretching tires, a screech of tires, a consistent beeping of cards, horns out of the, horns out of their, out there on the street. Beeping car horns out there on the street tell you that it's gone 8 p.m. People are on the way home, finishing their day. You should join them. You decide. Sam and ask go home. Yeah, let's go home. You breathe a deep sigh. It may not have been a successful day, but at least it's over. You are looking forward to a classic Friday night, watching old mystery scenes series at home in sweatpants and getting drunk and cheap booze. Since the early afternoon, you have been staring at the forbidden bottle of liquor at the other end of the room. Up until now, a vague sense of professionalism has kept you from drinking yourself into oblivion. Now, nothing stands in your way. You're not home yet, dude. Don't drink a drive. Suddenly you hear a knock at the door. Uh, don't make a sound now. Yo, what's up? The door slowly cracks open. With a timid creak. I did it for you. The unknown guest pauses. Then, in a breathy and metabolic tone, you hear a woman utter, Hello? Your insides cramp. You suddenly realize you haven't cleaned up your you cleaned your office uh, all this year. Wait, we're in September, right? That what I said. Dang, dude. You click the try to clean up. Invite her in. It looks good. I invite her in. Uh, I wasn't expecting that art style. By the light of the desk, you now see more of a silhouette. A breathtaking woman lights up your office. Literally, she lit up a cigarette. No doubt older than 40, maybe even 50. Hard to say. Clad in black, a skin-tight dress, accumulated in a... Dow, that word, to defy the laws of gravity. Uh, I, I, okay. <laughs> a smoky eyeshadow as dark as algae, washed ashore, blonde, coif, Koi, 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 coffee, uh, whatever. Wavy here under a dark brunette, br that thing. The faint light of the southern sun catches in strands of her hair, and we wonder how many heads this woman must have turned during her prime. She's completely different from your usual customer. Nervous, nervous bankers with sweat stains under their armpits, convinced their wives it has something to do with the mailman. Every move she makes is a calculated grace. Smooth as an eel, she walks towards you and sits down in the corner of your desk. We have a chair. Determined, she walks towards you and sits down. Yeah. Which is a little bold. Makes you blush. It's bold. We have a chair there. What are you trying to do? Intimidate me? Which is a little bold. Without asking you first, as a professional, you're not gonna. You're not giving anything away. That's right. Stone cold. She seems to want to play seductive damsel in distress. The quiet, amused voice in your subconscious is pleased that the stranger may be sharing your enthusiasm for film noir cliches. A farther, a far louder noise is surprised that this woman seems what? A far louder voice is surprised. A far louder voice is surprised that this woman seems to think that a sexy pose and revealing clothes could win you over. And both voices agree. Oh, you got voices. Okay. Agree you don't think, uh, you don't like being manipulated. You don't think that the stranger perched on your table is trying to recover from a hard working day as a lingerie model, and therefore you see no logical reason for her behavior. 
When she begins to speak, her voice is smoky and full of promise. My name is Delilah Marsh. I'm looking for a private investigator. I was told you are the best. She extends her hand. Kiss her hand. You've come to the right place, lady. <laughs> sounds so bad. What can I do for you? You sit back in your chair and fold your arms over your stomach. The woman seems a little irritated that her provocative behavior seems to have no effect on you. That's right. Professional. The best. She moves from the edge of the desk and sits down in the chair posed. Aha! Ah, yes, I. She clears her throat. As she continues to speak, the smoky seductive creeps back into her voice. Oh, she's trying hard. My name is Delilah. I need help. Ah, what do you want? It's about me, Data. Tabitha. She has disappeared. You're pulling out a paper and pencil. This is going to be a walk in the park. A walk in the kidnap kids park. Well, when did you see her last and where? The woman puts on a fake smile. I live in Innsmouth. It's a small port town north of Arkham. You frown. This, this is a bit vague. This is a bit vague. What was your child doing when you saw her last? What hobbies does she have? Oh, you know, kid stuff. They just run around and uh, play with their yo-yos, that sort of thing. Delilah nervously combs her hair through her hair. Does your daughter have any friend? Yo-yos. What about her father? What does your daughter look like? Now, is she nervous because she's making up this story? Or is she nervous because her daughter is missing? I think she's making up this story. Because there's Cthulhu right here. But <laughs> she's making up this story. Because she tried to seduce us in the beginning. She just wants us in Innsmouth. Uh, what does your daughter look like? She's only eight and the sweetest girl you can imagine. She's been missing without a trace since last week. None of her schoolmates have seen her and no one knows where she might have gone. She hands you a photo. Look, this is my little munchkin. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> Good heavens. Is this supposed to be a joke? Is that really the face of a child? You of a Saudi photo or a shoddy photo of it? You are being filmed as part of a reality TV show? A bit of stomach acid and the last bite of lunch slowly but surely makes our way up the back of your mouth. Ugh. You throw up into the desk drawer, swallow it. None of these are good options. Why are you throwing up? It's just a child. You incense. I thought you said this game is about inclusion. Swallow it. With narrow eyes, you swallow the bile. An involuntary pull of face. So I continues to look at you, hopefully. She obviously didn't notice your little mishap. Oh, she did. That was close. It could have been unpleasant. I'm so desperate her eyes locked with yours. Uh, don't you think there's something strange about your child? Ask some more questions about the case. Let's be polite. Ask more questions about the case. Does your daughter have any friends? Does your daughter have any friends she might be staying with? Classmates? Sport club members? Anything like that? Delilah slightly shakes her head. Very strange. You're about to ask if the girl at least had any imaginary friends, but you hold back. Uh, yo-yo? Hold on. Yo-yos. Ring, ring. Can you hear that? It's the 90s calling, and they want their outdated toys back. Delilah blushes. Oh, that was us saying that crap. Normally, you would find this quite attractive, but the case of a missing child beckons and utterly unconvinced by the way this woman pretends to be a mother. Pretends! She remains silent. Confront! Something's fishy here. You have a nose for this sort of thing. This one. That's why you became a private investigator. Or, to be more precise, that's why you took an online detective course for a one-off fee provided the necessary qualifications. It's time to take your visitor to task. You look at her closely. Why did you come to me? Has your daughter really disappeared? Oh, uh, that's a face. You simply can't help question her further. Her story simply doesn't wash, although it's exactly what your instructor warned you about. You're sticking to your principal. Delia's mouth became even more pinched. Something you didn't think was possible. I represent this... In, I, re, I resent this insolence. Of course she's disappeared. What do you take me for? You stare at one another. 
The only sound in the room is the roar and the rush hour traffic creeping in through the window. Delilah's face remains motionless, icy, and you have neither evidence nor arguments to back up your suspicions. She still seems angry, but she also seems desperate and dependent on your services. We can jack up the price. I want more questions. What about Afaja? What about Tabitha's father? Are you separated? Often? Often children repair with family members. She smiles sadly. My little one can't swim well enough for that. What? <laughs> Your pen remains on the same spot of the no pen. What was that supposed to mean? Yeah, that confused the crap out of me too. Ah! Let her talk. Delilah turned her gaze away from you and looks dreamily no longer... Long, no, no, longly out the window. Her father was a fisherman, most like most of the village. A few years ago, he went out to the sea, but never returned. His boat was washed ashore weeks later. His colleagues told me that he had fi finally drowned, followed the call of the waves. You keep quiet for a moment. Deceased family members are always a sensitive subject. This whole colleague saying he finally followed the call of the waves. I was like, screw you, dude, he just died. My sincerest condolences. She seemed calm. Oh, somehow I always knew that moment would come. I think my husband is in a better place now. And at some point, I'll join him. You look closer at Delilah's outfit. Judging by her behavior and clothes, you would never have taken her for a fisherman's wife. I was thinking the same thing, but I wasn't going to say it. Uh, how much money you got? Forgive me for asking, but what do you do for a living? Her jaw tenses. I work at Innsmouth Tourist Department. Oh, crap. That doesn't sound good. Why do you ask? For a widow's single mom, you're surprisingly well-dressed. You don't seem like someone who's handling... Oh, handling... Yeah, you're well-dressed. I mean, it's a compliment. For a fisherman's widow and a single mom, you're surprisingly well-dressed. Either the tourism industry is more lucrative than I thought, or your husband was quite well insured. Oh, I wouldn't have said that last one. You take a theoretical break. Or, is there another explanation? She smiles, uncertainly. My family is wealthy, old money, and some kind of local nobility. I don't understand what this question has to do with my missing daughter. There's a... Glint in her eye. Combative glint in her eye. Dirty money might be well, well be connected to your daughter's disappearance. That's more question about the case. Old money. I mean... It's, it's true. If your family inherited this money through screwing someone else over, and all of a sudden their members, their their children are like, you know what? Those jerks took our grandpappy's money. Let's let's get it back. So, hmm. It's none of my business where you get your money from, but if the source is rather unorthodox, it could be related to your daughter's disappearance. You peer over your desk and take in her a little better. Dude, eyes are up there. Your face is serious. Her face, your face is serious and impenetrable. But inside your head, your inner Humphrey Bogart nerd feels incredibly cool. Della's smiles remain unchanged, but none of her eyelids has started twitching. But one of her eyelids has started twitching. Ha ha! Nervously, perhaps. Or did your question make her angry? Uh oh. No, I have no. I have nothing to do with any illegal business. You lean back. Mm. I have no further questions, Your Honor. You humbly, you you mumble more to yourself than to her. Delilah stretches her neck. Why? No doubt she would have to take a look at your notepad. Your pen hovers over your notes you've taken. Missing daughter. Dodgy lady. That's it. You worked with us. Yeah, I'll take the case. You nod. A person's case, nothing unusual. The conventional little girl runs away from home after reading her first romance novel. Usually they hide at the edge of the forest or in a library. Should be pretty uh, straightforward. Before you can say anything, she drops a photo of the child and rolls out of bills on your desk. For your expenses. You nod slowly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Try not to drool down the front of your shirt. You haven't seen this much money in ages. You don't have much time to prepare. A quick search reveals that only one bus goes to Innsmouth. And only once a day. A pattern emerges in your research. A few news items related to little... Coastal town are all about missing persons. In addition, you find rather you find some rather old-fashioned articles that praise the coastal town as a secret holiday destination. The best fish! 
untouched beach promenade authentic fishing people are the recurrent buzzword authentic fishing people yeah that's that's a hipster thing right there if i say so myself what the crap is on Get dang it, I don't know where that came from. Delilah has given you the address at which you're supposed to drop off her daughter as soon as you find her. She also wrote down her phone number on the child's photo. You take another look at the picture before you pack... Wait. Oh, her phone number, okay. Okay, Seaside Promenade. The next morning you travel by bus. I ain't hitchhiking. Fool. I seen movies. Boston, 22nd of September. Your journey begins at a busy bus station. There is supposed to be a bus line that departs from here to Innsmouth. Buses. You think to yourself, not only an environmental friendly means of transportation, they're also easy on your wallet. Sadly, the departure boards aren't much help. New York, Maine, Rhode Island. No trace of Innsmouth as your destination. You wander around for a little... Wander around until you notice a cleaner eating a sandwich on the other side of one of the vending machines. Uh, talk to the cleaner. Excuse me, where can I find a bus to ends without letting go of his sandwich? The cleaner points to an abandoned counter at the, uh, in the dingiest corner that a public bus station could be capable of. The man gives you a nod indicating that anything that can be said, he has indeed been said. <laughs> You find that the counter is elaborately decorated with cobwebs. Great. It's a bit early for Halloween. Eh, not really. Preparations. But at least someone's made an effort. At the moment, no one seems to be there. You press your face against the plastic when it appear into the room behind. I don't want to press my face against things. You realize the time we're in? Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? I had to go to Ant's mouth. No one's there. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bus ticket appears on the counter. Might the trip be free? Sure. Uh, I'm just going to take the ticket. Yoink. <laughs> In all likelihood, the ticket is already on the counter and you simply hadn't noticed it before. Someone must have paid and just left it there. This is what you tell yourself while you are looking for the departure gate with a ticket in hand. Yo, no one's out there and this gate, this ticket there. Okay, it's bad. Don't do that. Where is this bus hiding? In between the polished greyhounds and travelers stowing their luggage, saying goodbye to the drop off and drop entirely into their seats. There's a kind of dumpster. A dumpster with windows and wheels. No. It's actually a bus. It's a bit of a rusty side. It's been on the rusty side. And even from the distance, you sense a strange smell it emits. Is that sulfur? You're not convinced how this thing is supposed to drive. It's in its vicinity. Everything is noticeably quieter than the other bus stops. The people getting on show no sign of emotion. Nobody is trying to jump the queue here. Instead, the passengers move past the bus driver at a uniform speed, one after the other, shuffling up the creaking steps. Each two-seater bench is occupied by individuals, as if they want to make sure no one come into contact with their fellow passengers. The sign clearly says Innsmouth. No departure times, no stopovers, just Innsmouth. On the bus. Undecided. You're standing on the stairs of the bus. Talk to the driver, show your ticket, sneak past in silence. Show him your ticket. You hand the driver your ticket, no reaction. At least you can't make out a reaction. The lighting is poor on the shadows of this dusty driver's cap covers almost his entire face. You notice something strange on his neck, but you can't quite make out what it might be. You're standing in the door waiting for the okay. A nod, anything. The sulfur odor has increased. A queue has formed behind you. But no one is pushing or complaining. The people wait quietly. Get out of here, say something, just keep walking. We gotta get there, man, just keep walking. You shuffle sideways through the center aisle, and you don't remember the bus looking this long from the outside. You are surrounded by shady, shabby two-seat benches, and some um, are already occupied, one traveler per row. The last bench is free. Looks like the upholstery is torn in some places, though. Or has it been slit open? You can see springs or sharp wire edges and some sticky lick uh, have leaked onto the floor. <laughs> Why don't you just sit down in one of the free rows? Here in the back, almost everything is occupied. Most of the passengers have to purposely seem to have purposely set down the aisle seats, blocking off the window seats. 
Maybe this is an opportunity to get closer to the common Innsmouth in visitor? Uh, sit down with someone. It's in the rear. Uh, the rear one had that pokey spring. I don't want to get anything stuck up my butt. Well, sit down with someone. As an unconformist, you joined one of the passengers in a double seat. Since only one man was so considerate to sit at the window, your op options were very limited. As far as you could tell, the man has haggard features with a barely, with barely, barely any luggage. Okay. The hood of the gray jumper pulled uh, far onto his face. The man looks out to the street as if something very important has happened in there that requires his attention. Is this seat taken? You ask politely. He turns his head and gives you a brief once over. Without saying a word, he turns away again. I'm going to sit down. All right. I wasn't a no either. You sit down. And regret it instantly. The, so the smell of sulfur is now overpowered by something else. Something that smells like it's been in the sun for too long. You're trying to catch a glimpse of what's under that hood. Does this person have a genetic defect? Is he malnourished? No. You're not, exactly, you're not sure exactly where the problem might be. But you're trying to stay professional. You awkwardly stare at the headrest of the person in front of you. I'm going to try to talk to him. There's a chance to get some inside information. Do small talk about veganism. Look the passenger over. Play the tourist, man. Oh, hi. You clear your throat before you speak. Twitching. And with a slight tremor, the man turns to you. Excuse me. I'm visiting Inmouth for the first time. Do you happen to come here? From here? A twitch is all you get. Maybe you should get right to the point. It's hard to tell if you're boring him. I want to mention the missing girl. You clear your throat once more. You see your seat neighbor turns to you in slow motion. Excuse me. I'm a private detective and I'm going to Innsmouth for a job. You pause for a dramatic effect. Mentioning your professionalism usually impresses people and their eyes grow larger with surprise. The Innsmouth gentleman also has a big, glassy eyes, but it seems to be more in a medical problem. You fish the photo of the missing, missing girl from your inside pocket of your coat. Tabitha Marsh has been missing for a few days. I think she may be hiding with friends. Have you seen her? He looks at the Polaroid photo, then slowly shakes his head. Dead end. You put the photo back in your jacket pocket. Small talk has been gradually slow, so you decide to let it go. This ride is taking forever. The bus leaves the country road and turns off a ro uh, wooden sign saying Innsmouth in red, flaky letters. The journey continues rather bumpily along the narrow dirt road, littered with numerous numerous potholes. In the distance, some houses are already visible. Seagulls circle the roofs of the outermost edge of the city. Slowly, all passengers take their bags from underneath their seats and get ready. Curiously, you look through... Uh... What's it with the other side? That's odd. The bus passes by a huge... What is this? A scrapyard? Parking lot? Why would something like this be here, right outside the city? You pass another wooden sign whose half-peeled writing advertises the in-mouth park and ride area. A lot of cars look like they have been sitting there for years. Sand covers some of the bonnets and windscreens. The front door of the bus opens with a squeak, and you join the monstrous line of locos stepping off of the bus in a daze, almost walking in step as you get closer to an exit. As you walk down the steps, you have to protect your eyes from the sunlight. Turns out the windows of the bus were tinted. The other passengers shuffle off. Do, do, do. Finally, Innsmouth, you examine your surroundings while you stretch your legs trying to unwind. Unwind from the stressful journey. No artist could have all adequately captured the scenery and beauty of this place. The clear blue sky lights up the town square, which is paved with bright limestone and surrounded by neo-colonial colonial buildings reminiscent of 19th century New England. A fresh sea breeze, crying seagulls, and local locals go on about their business. In the center of the square, water trickles from a fountain. As you reach your, as you stretch your limbs and breathe in the clean air, you're suddenly startled by the water feature right in front of you. The fountain is an enormous fish-like brass creature. An open jaw lined with shark-like fangs sprouts 
brackish water down its massive inhumanity controlled body contorted body as if that wasn't enough there appears to be a human body's squ squirming underneath its massive claws their faces are contorted as yours is right now how long have you been standing here eyes wide open in shock you feel utterly paralyzed you start to scan the town square and notice more and more disturbing details on every corner you spot ornamental statues and release of fish but those are not your classic harmless kind of fish these are pagan symbols and grimaces of supernatural creatures from the darkest crevices of the deep sea in surrounded houses you can see faces pressed up against the window all the locals appear to be watching you you suddenly start to think that the cries of the seagulls sound particularly human like they sound like humans crying out in pain what happened to the idetic, uh, idyllic scene a few, from a few minutes ago? Welcome to Innsmouth. Turn around, ignore. <laughs> what? Well, uh, turn around? Oh, I realized someone was talking to me. I thought we were reading the sign. Welcome to Innsmouth. How nice of you to visit. A small elderly woman waves at you from afar. She beams as you at you as if you were her long lost grandchild. She seems very different from the boars you met so far on the bus of the, on the bus into town. Her squeakily shakes you out of your nightmarish panic. It's so good to have you here. I've noticed you have taken our local taken well, you were taken by our local fountain. It was built in 1704 by Alun Necrotis. Favorite artist uh, and friends of Charles Dexter Tillingost. The founder of Innsmouth. A, the central figure was a represent and I can't do that anymore <laughs> was a present and figure sister was a present and it was supposed to be supposed to commemorate their travels together to Sario you can clearly see the Egyptian influences in Necrosis work here and there she points wildly in every direction in here but I'm sure you've already noticed this yourself you look like someone who knows their way around art, she says with a wide smile. You're still in shock. Click. She beams at you. Who? No. Of course. I'm an art historian. That's probably the wrong thing to say. Who are you? Oh, I have not introduced myself. I am ever so sorry. In front of you now stands a small, plump person in tasteless costume. Your rudeness doesn't seem to have curbed her enthusiasm in the slightest. My name is Morel... Poop in place. Okay. <laughs> I'm the director of Parks Commission, chief tourism officer, and head of the welcoming committee. Ta-da! Behind Merle, there's a ramshackle wooden information stand, lonely decorated with balloons. A colorful painted sign reads, Welcome to Innsmouth. Merle tiptoes over her information stand and picks up the whole load of flyers and leaflets from the rickety display cases. She looks down at all of the papers in her arms and briefly shrieks with laughter. My goodness, why don't you take this city map to begin with, useful, and take you take this map and put it into your coat pocket. Would you like to find out more about our wonderful town which has been awarded the Coastal Stunning Town Award for several years now? And would you, actually I'm, uh, I'm looking for someone. Here I am. <laughs> Small punch woman starts giggling. In's mouth welcomes you warmly. So, you're looking for someone. It's not that uncommon for two lonely hearts to find one another in this romantic place. Murrow winks at you. Hey, uh, missing girl. You see, I'm looking for this girl. It's always about a girl, isn't it? Tabitha Marsh. <laughs> Eight years old. Her mother asked me to take on the case. You took out the photo of Murrow and immediately rips it out of your hands. Oh, boy. Oh, what a cutie. But I'm sorry to say I've not heard of anything about missing girls. How awful. This sort of thing doesn't happen in Ian's mouth. Perhaps you can have a look around the beach or the playground. There are a lot of kids around there. I'm sure that's where the little one will be. With an unnaturally wide grin, she hands you back your photo. Turns around quickly to make her way across another tourist family. 
You head further into town, along the cobbled road in the direction of the coast. Not long ago, the sun was bright in the sky, but already the first wharfs of mist are creeping onto the streets. The air feels thicker and the sun can no longer penetrate the fog. Time to think about where you want to go. You slow down. You lean your briefcase against a wall and start pacing up and down a quiet alleyway. Got an important choice to make right now. The city's center is the north. For, uh, even from afar, you can see the outlines of the old, ornately decorated buildings in the main town square. Here you can find the police station, the main shopping street, and of course the town hall. As a close to town, Innsmouth has a harbor. From your research, you found out that this is the bustling area with a dreamy beach. You expect there to be mostly tourists. According to your research, the only hotel in town, the Gilman Hotel, is located in the old town. You think about checking in. You can do it freshen up and get rid of that bus smell that's still stink clinging into your clothes. Just as you are about to set off, your heart leaps out of your throat. You've forgotten your briefcase. This has never happened to you. You usually take good care of the little, the little you possess. Um, there's nothing you can do about this now. You have to wait until your return journey to find out whether someone is handed in to lost and found. Still, you could swear that briefcase was already gone when you got off the bus. Did we just put our briefcase down in the alleyway before we went around? We just walked back and forth thinking of our area, thinking of what to do? What? I'll tell you what. I'm going to leave this here. This is very, very interesting. And it definitely seems like it could be a very, very hilarious game. Just the characters. The art style is really, really cool. I mean, you have the mystery of the case. It's gonna have, it's got to have some horror elements to it, right? I mean, look at that thing. Pretty cool. Make sure you uh, pick up this game if it interests you to see the rest of the story. I don't want to go through it all for you because I want you guys to play it for yourselves. A really, really cool game. Welcome to Innsmouth. Nope, the Innsmouth Case. That's the name of the game. Make sure you check it out. At the very least, wishlist it on Steam. Let the developers know that it's interested in the game. It makes them very, very happy to see that. And also, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button to show your support. If you're new and you haven't subscribed for more content, feel free to share this video in comments down below. And until next time, I'm Apex Reaper. You all stay positive. Thanks for watching. Afraid of the dark? Are you scared?